welcome back. You're in the C-Space studio sponsored by Integral Ad Science here at CES 2024. I'm your host, James Kotecki, and joining me right now is uh, one of the executives from our very own sponsor, Integral Ad Sciences, Giannis Socios, you're the Chief Commercial Officer, and thank you so much for joining us. Really appreciate you being here. Thanks for having me. It's great to be here. Um, so we had your CMO in earlier, obviously, but i like everybody to take a crack at kind of defining the brand. So what is Integral Ad Science? What does it mean in 2024? Yeah, so Integral Ad Science is a global media measurement and optimization platform, and what we do is we deliver the world's most actionable data uh, to drive superior results for the world's leading advertisers uh, and publishers and platforms. Uh, and uh, we're investing very much in artificial intelligence and ML uh, to make yes. that happen, and we're excited to innovate a lot this year. And I understand you have some exciting news about eye tracking technology, eye tracking. Yes. So tell right. me about what that means and what you're, what you're uh, talking about here at CES. Indeed, we are very excited about this. We, uh, we've announced our quality attention measurement offering. Um, which is the first offering in the market that combines both media quality with eye tracking data from the uh, largest consumer biometric data set from mm -hmm. Lumen Technologies. Mm -hmm. um, and it does so in a way that it uses machine learning technology to, to combine those two together and to deliver superior results for advertisers. Yeah. So let's dive into that. Like, how does that work? Where, are you, where, where is the data coming from? Uh, can any, is, is, are people contributing to this data set all the time? Does it have to be someone goes into a lab and their eyes are measured? Like, how does this actually look in practice? Yeah, well, let's first take a step back and talk a little bit about attention itself. You know, attention is a very important topic right now. There's a lot of uh, uh, both complexity around attention and a lot of interest among advertisers because the world that advertisers live in is becoming increasingly complex. Yeah. Uh, and also there's a, there's a lot of, um, you know, Im importance for advertisers for them to actually drive superior results uh, with, uh, with data. So the way our technology works is we combine uh, the, we use machine learning and artificial intelligence to take uh, a panel of 650,000 plus users mm -hmm. with eye tracking from Lumen, take all that data from, from that, literally observing the behavior of people looking at yeah. interacting with ads, and combining that with media quality signals from IS, from the core IS yeah. technology. Things like viewability, or the environment of the ad, or the interaction of the, of the ad, um, and we combine all that using machine learning technology to create one aggregate attention score. Yeah. And then advertisers can then use that score to drive better planning, better activation, better creative into their mm -hmm. decisions. Now, one of the things that's really important for marketers is uh, to drive superior results with the data that they get from things like attention. So one of the things I'm most excited about with attention is that we're able to demonstrate the link between high quality attention and better results for advertisers. For example, okay. yeah. campaigns that have high quality attention have more than 130% increase in conversion rates, mm -hmm. or more than 91% increase in, in brand intent. Mm -hmm. So these are the types of metrics that we want to demonstrate to advertisers that by optimizing for attention, they're actually driving better results. As you were saying that, it kind of struck me that it's it's like a way to make make eye tracking make sense, I suppose. Yes. Because I imagine if you just had eye tracking data, but not the IIS data that you're talking about, you'd have you know where the eyeballs are going, but you couldn't tie it towards things like the quality of the media. Of the That's exactly right. Yeah. Think of the eye tracking as one very important element mm -hmm. of whether someone is paying attention. You know, is their eye actually yeah. on on the ad? But then you look, you need to understand: is the ad in a very crowded space? What is the you know how many ads are around? Uh, your, your, your specific ad or how much content is around it and right. what other actions is the user doing in order to engage with your ad? Are they turning the mm -hmm. volume on or off? Yeah. Or are they scrolling in certain ways? These combined, all these metrics together can give you a much yeah. better understanding of whether the user is actually paying attention and driving results. And you mentioned you're using AI ML as part of this process. How much of that is novel? How much of that have you had to um, invent or advance in order to actually get the results that you want? It, it, we've been investing in AI and ML for many, many years. Uh, there's a reason science is in our name. Uh, we are a science company that's been using artificial intelligence and ML, and we're applying that to a vast data set. We have over 280 billion data signals that we process every single day. Yes. Um, so that's a, that's a very uh, big, um, big data set that we work with. A lot of the innovations that we've been making recently is using AI on that data set in novel ways. Mm -hmm. you know, so we can use that, for example, to segment the data and create contextual segments that we can act on. We, we're using AI also to do things like prediction or, mm -hmm. or uh, decisioning, so actually helping um, advertisers, based on our data, come up with recommendations to optimize their campaigns. And we're using also AI to protect the brand, so to yes. very easily detect is there a threat? Is there actually something not appropriate for the brand in this particular mm -hmm. content? 
um, and allowing the mm -hmm. advertisers to act on that as well. It seems like you found a lot of interesting ways to apply it. Is there, is there still like a nagging or gnawing question in your mind about like, what, what, is there another thing that you need to understand about AI or what's, what's next on the, uh, on the agenda for you as you think about the questions here? Yeah, it's, um, the big question is really how can we um, use AI to come up with even more powerful insights to drive even more powerful results for advertisers. And the things that the advertisers really care about, and we speak with a lot of CMOs, even here at CES, they care about maximizing the ROI, yes. um, maximizing their conversions uh, that they're, they're doing, they want to minimize their waste, they want to protect their brand, and they want to be socially mm -hmm. responsible. These are all the things that they want. Um, and then on the publisher side, they want to maximize their yield, and they mm -hmm. want to have a good consumer experience. Some of the things that we've, uh, that we've actually learned about the application of AI is that it can have a very meaningful impact in understanding the in-depth the content that you're analyzing. For mm -hmm. example, we, uh, one of the big trends in the industry right now is video. There's a lot of yes. video content getting created, a lot of content inside social networks. Um, and marketers really want to understand what's inside that video. Don't just tell me mm -hmm. the description of the video. They want to understand yeah. exactly if the video is safe for their brand. So we use AI and ML to, uh, with a product called Total Media Quality to analyze a video frame by frame and analyze each image, text, and sound and be able to understand the risk of that video, the risk levels and the risk categories and align that to mm -hmm. standards like GARM and IAB yes. so we can then empower advertisers to say, this is the level of brand safety and suitability that I'm comfortable with and these are the videos that I need to take action on yeah. because I don't meet that. So it's that type of application of AI and ML that is the future of, of this technology. And one of the things I'm excited about is that it, it, is, um, it leads to better results. Uh, it, when we analyze our total media quality versus traditional metadata analysis of, vi of videos, it is three times more effective. Mm -hmm. And that's really what we're striving for. Three times more effective is, a, is an incredible uh, boost. And this is actually something I was just going to ask you, which is, do you think there are home runs kind of still hiding in the data that current or future applications of AI will be able to find? Yeah. Or is it at this point mostly about getting to continue the baseball analogy base hits, right? Is it about just incremental improvement or is there going to be some amazing counterintuitive insight that humans would have never found that just allows people to kind of go bonkers in their performance? I think there's both uh, singles and a lot of home runs waiting for us. Okay. Um, and I think, as I think about the analogy of singles, I think about applying AI and ML to more and more platforms. For example, bringing that, for example, to CTV, which is another very big area of growth, or audio or other places. As I think about the real home runs, and what gets me excited is to tie all the way to outcomes and conversions, those, that type of more deterministic, um, you identify a trend, you make a recommendation, the advertiser optimizes based on that recommendation, and you can demonstrate pure ROI lift. To me, that is a very important future step yeah. of AI and ML. And what's your biggest challenge in getting to that future? Um, honestly, it is a, we, we, we are on our way, we're on mm -hmm. our path. I don't think there's anything major that is standing in the way. A lot of this is actually getting the data in, building the models, doing mm -hmm. it in a responsible doing way. Doing the work. Doing mm -hmm. the work mm -hmm. and making sure you do it responsibly. That's super important. Making mm -hmm. sure that we build AI models without bias. Yeah. Making sure that we build AI models that are privacy respectful. Um, and then also partnering with other companies in the industry to get all the data together because you want to combine data from eye tracking, from audience, from conversions, from media quality. So bringing all those parties together as an ecosystem so that we can connect all the dots all the way from an impression to a user all the way to a conversion event and an impact for the brand. That is what we need to do. So we're here at C-Space, that's the media, marketing, advertising, branding section of a much bigger technology show, CES. Yes. So in this large ecosystem in which we play a part, are there other technologies, is there a technology that you're really excited about um, in addition to everything we've been talking about today? Yes, I'm, uh, I'm excited about many technologies in our space, which is why I'm in this space, is one of the most dynamic spaces. So attention is, is a very big one. Um, one of the areas that I'm really excited about is connected television. Yeah. And uh, we've been having a lot of meetings here at CES, both with advertisers, with agencies, with publishers, with OEMs, with broadcasters. Now, make no mistake, linear TV consumption is increasingly moving into CTV. And advertisers and marketers are just thirsty for understanding the CTV experience and having the same level of confidence and transparency on CTV as they do on linear TV. So I think this, there's a lot of innovation happening. Uh, it's, some of it involves working, having publishers provide more transparency into the content that they show on CTV. Some of it involves companies like us, IS and Publica, analyzing that data and creating really actionable insights for optimization. And another part that I'm excited about is companies like um, Publica, which is part of uh, the IS family, 
creating a superior CTV user experience. Mm -hmm. So making sure we optimize um, the user experience, for example, so that you don't have competitive duplication or like have two competitors side by side. You don't see the same ad again and again. Mm -hmm. How many times have, has that happened sure. to you? Right. Um, but also just have a, a richer, a more targeted, and more relevant experience on CTV. So I'm really excited yeah. about that future. So if we're talking again here in five years, we should really see some significant advancements there. Absolutely, and I think in five years, you're looking at, in my opinion, CTV being much more mainstream and the way people consume um, and, and drive a lot of advertising on both advertiser and publisher side. But I also think AI and ML in five years, yeah. I can't wait to see how it's going to revolutionize advertising and publishing. Well, it's an optimistic note to end on. Giannis Dosios, Integral Ad Science. You're the Chief Commercial Officer, and you've been a great guest. Thank you so much. It's great to be here. Thanks so much. And of course, we really appreciate Integral Ad Science for sponsoring the C-Space Studio. I'm your host, James Kotecki. We're here at CES 2024. So many great conversations are coming up. So stay with us. Come back. Do whatever you have to do. We will be live when we come back.